All right, so I'm going to show you how I make my variable pitch hubs. And I'm going to show you from my penny plane, even though I make them all the same way. Okay, the F1R, except the screw holder is a little different. All right, now, if I had just lost the plane or something like that, I, I probably wouldn't make this video because it just takes a lot longer to make them when you video something. But right now I have two VP hubs and they're in good shape in penny plane, so I'm not in a rush. So I'll spend a little time making this video. All right, hopefully it'll help some of you because uh, I'm really into the VP. It's, it's really a lot of fun and it's not too difficult. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's not that bad. Okay, so I'll show you my simplified approach. Now there are really three parts to it. And one is you got to make the uh, shaft and the driver. I like to make the hardest parts first. So the shaft and the driver. So I'm going to do that first and show you how you do that. Then the two, the T tubes, it's tubes in a T, and I'll show you that. That's the second part. Then the screw holder, and this is a little fancier one because it's a foam uh, one. But I, I'll also show you a simplified one. And also, uh, there are instructions on this, but it's with vacuum forming, and I, I didn't want to do that. So I'll just show you my kind of simplistic way to do it. All right. And then lastly, usually I'll make this. This is what actually holds the prop shafts and stuffs like that okay and the F1R is exactly the same except I use the balsa as I explain in my video on variable pitch props all right and then we're all ready for the prop blade here uh, I just was working on one so this is for my uh, penny plane here and you can actually get the covering on pretty smooth uh, I like to use my little you know covering jig and I show this I think I showed this in another video yeah I did in my prop video all right all right, so let's get going on the VP problem. We're going to work on the getting the driver going. All right, I'm going to start by showing you some of the materials you need, okay? And for, uh, you need tubing and strip. And it's a carbon composite, so I basically get it from CST uh, Sales. And I'll give you the link, all right? Now, there are different sizes. So for the penny plane, I use a tube, which is .039 outer diameter. 20 inch inner diameter and they also give it to you in millimeters and then for the driver bar okay that's a strip and I use a little wider strip so you have to look under strip and this is 0.4 millimeters by 2 millimeters alright okay so that's what I use for the penny plane now I might as well show you for the F1R I just use a little smaller so for the tube I use 0.028 by 011 inches and then for the strip, I use a little thinner two, uh, I'm sorry, one millimeter by 0.4 millimeter. They're both 0.4 millimeters, so I just get one and two millimeter strip. Now these actually come in in 36 inch lengths, okay? So I cut them into, in half, so I get 18 inch lengths. And uh, it's a, it depends on the size. As the tube gets bigger, it's more expensive. I, I believe for the penny plane, this was like 10 bucks for a meter. All right, but again, you know, well, I could probably make 15 hubs out of that. And then for the strip, it was much cheaper, four or five dollars. Okay, and again, you only need one or two, and you have probably have a life. Get two, you have a lifetime supply. Now the other thing you need is for the uh, shaft, and there I'm using .020 wire. I was using .015 originally, but I'd recommend against that, and I'll tell you why later. So here's .020 wire, and I, you could just get this on Amazon, a K&A S has it, you'll see it shows up. And some of the uh, hobby places also have it as well, you can get it, okay? I think I got this from Easy Built Models, this one, all right, which is, uh, it, no, was it, eight? yeah, it was 18 inch lengths. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need except for the screw holder, and I'll show you that later when I get to it. So I have some leftover from the last time I made a penny plane hub. So here's the tubing, here's the strip. So I'm gonna get cut in this. That's the first thing you gotta do and we'll get started. All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do is bend the shaft, okay? And I've got a piece of .020 wire. It's about two and a half inches long, that's plenty. And I have a nice pair of pliers, okay? I got this from IFFS actually, Indoor Free Flight Supply. And so what you do is you grab it about maybe a third of the way down and you start by making a 90 degree bend. So let me do that. There you go. Now don't go any more than that because otherwise you'll put another little bend in it here and that'll kind of mess things up. So just go 90 degrees or so or close. 
And then what I do, you see, I just squeeze it down by hand like that. You might have to grab it, but you see, eventually you can grab it like that and start to close it up, you see? It's already closed quite a bit. I hope you're getting this because <laughs> it's hard to, I can't watch it while I'm making it. So then I eventually just get it, and there you go, you see? I got it really nice, and ah, I'm gonna squeeze. And now that you get it all the way, there you go. You want a full bend like that, okay? And then if you want to clean up, boy, that came out perfect. You want it to sit like that, all right? So there you go. Now the next part is, and I'm just gonna do it to make sure it's, yeah, it's really nice. Next part is you gotta bend these back so that you have a little driver there, okay? And you can do that, uh, you could just do it with the pliers, all right? It, it's a little tricky. I'm used to using this little gizmo, and this is from, uh, it, you know, Bob, uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, he doesn't, it's not available anymore, unfortunately. And uh, what it did is it has a very little hole there. I don't know if you can see it, okay? And it's slightly big, smaller on one side, slightly bigger on the other. Now this is really made for like F1D, all right? Like 0.01 wire or something like that. I like to use it for F1R because that's 0 0.009 inch wire and it fits perfect in here. Now for penny plane, this is 0.020 wire. It's kind of big. It doesn't really totally fit in, but I still kind of putz around with it anyway, even though, again, you don't have to do it this way. What it does is you can slip it in there, you see, and it should hold it nice, and you can go in until you hit that stop, even though I usually go in less because you don't want too much driver. You can kind of do it with the 20 by clowning around a little, and there you go. You see, I got it. And uh, so now it's in there and it's ready to go. And let me show you. Maybe I could do this in one long take. I'm not sure. Uh, I go over to my little clamp and then I just get it in there. So let me get this going. While it looks like it's in position, I get it clamped in. And there you go. Now it's nice and tight. All right, so you got to make sure it's sitting square. And that actually looks pretty good. So I'll show you the next part. I, I hope the light's okay over here. Here, let me slide this over a little bit and maybe that'll help. All right, okay. So then you get a razor blade like this and you slide it in there. I hope you can see this. And now I'm just gonna bend it down and try to keep it straight. So uh, there you go. You know, with the thin wire, it's pretty easy. 020 is a little stiffer, but it's still pretty easy. You see, and I do both sides like that. Okay, not totally straight, but I can fi fix that later on. And then the next thing you do, because it's not really at 90, it's still sticking up, is I just get a hammer, because these are slightly angled this way and this way. All right? Um, and, and you just tap it lightly to get it square. And I also hold this so it doesn't knock it out. So... <clears throat> There you go, that's sitting nice and flat. And then this one, oh yeah, that's good. All right. So then I'll take it out. And again, I wasn't planning, I was doing, planning on doing this in several takes, but let me take it out. Okay, and there it is. So now I'm gonna take it out of that. You see, it made a little driver there. That's the driver. Now it's a bit of an angle, but that's why you get your pliers and you kind of flatten everything out, make sure. So this part's important. All right, here you go. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and then you can also make sure that's still nice and tight. So the next thing I do, look at that. That looks, whoops, that looks really good. So then I check it, and here I have a handy little on my table. This is kind of nice. So I very carefully check it here, all right, to make sure, and boy, that one came out really, really nice. Okay, to make sure it's square like that, right? It has to be right at 90. That's important to get your, up your prop to track correctly. And also, um, you want to make sure it's flat in this direction as well. And this one actually looks pretty good. So that's step one. So now the next step is to make the driver, okay, that that's going to go into. All right? And uh, I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now I'm going to make my driver bar, and the first thing I'm going to do is drill the holes, and this is important because you've got to get those accurate. So what I do is I like to tape it to a little piece of hardwood that I can then put into a clamp, okay? And then I marked it. Now, I make mine 22 millimeters long, so you can mark the length of it, 
And then I use, it's hard on this, but what I use is like this orange micron, which is 0.01 in this case. And you probably can't see it. I'll move it up a little bit, but I just made a little dot right where the middle was, exactly where the middle was. And then I like to come in about two or three millimeter. For penny playing, you make a bigger hole. So I come in about three millimeter from the end. I didn't mark the other hole yet because I'm going to do that after I drill it. So the next step now is I'm going to drill this and I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm going to drill the center hole first. I thought I'd show you my minuscule uh, workshop set up here. I have a tiny workshop in the rear bedroom and uh, that's a bandsaw from Micromark and uh, that's their drill press and get the variable speed. I got the variable speed attachment one actually. There's an attachment for variable speed. It's down here, okay? I would recommend get that because you can go really slow, even slower than the variable speed drill. This isn't the variable speed drill, it's the regular, but with the attachment, you could really vary it. Now my friend Tom got the variable speed one and he wasn't able to vary it as much as I can with that. So I'd recommend that. Okay, this just sits here. I have a little uh, mat that they also sell, shock absorption mat. And I also, with the bandsaw, I screwed it to a board here, okay, like a half inch hardboard. Then I clamped that to the table, all right? Now the other thing you should get, and I got all this from Micromark, but you can also get it elsewhere, um, is an XY table. They call it an XY table. And I would strongly recommend, you know, I, I should confess for years I've did it, done it by eye and I'm Always surprised how accurate you can get things by eye, but it is a little nicer with the XY table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drill the center hole, and that's, it's .020 wire, so I'm gonna use a drill that's close to .020, okay? And by the way, you can get them, like I got this from Indoor Free Flight Supply, which is .1 millimeter to one millimeter. You can also get them on Amazon, and the closest to .020 inch is the .5 millimeter drill. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill the center hole. I already marked it. And then, because you've got to put the drive shaft in there, and I'm going to actually saw that out, but I like to make the hole a little bigger so I can get the blade in there. I'll show you that later. So what I do is I drill the center hole. Okay, I'm not going to do that on camera because I've got to pay attention. And then I'll just move it over a little bit so I can drill another hole so I can get the blade in there and get going and maybe even a third if I'm feeling ambitious. I would take it easy with that though. I think you're better off sawing out the hole. The other thing I should point out is I always do this with a really good pair of magnifying glasses. This is about a three times lens and it also has a nice light on here, okay? So I can see what I'm doing. So you should definitely do that. You really need to get this fairly accurate. All right, so I'm gonna get the center hole and then I'll do the side holes. There's a little complication there. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I got the first hole drilled, which is the .020 or .5 millimeter. And then I moved the drill over just a little itsy bitsy, like a half a millimeter, and I drilled another hole. Okay, and then I took it off and I checked it. And to be honest with you, the other one I did, I, I didn't think it was perfectly centered, so I got rid of it and I did another one. This has really got to be nicely centered. So I was happy with this one. So now I'm gonna drill the end hole over here, okay? And then next I'll do the end hole over here. But there is one little issue I learned. I'm not gonna use .020 because in the hub, you see the wire there, that's .020 wire. If you drill a .020 hole, it can't bend like that. There's no room, you see, and you have to move it. So you need some room to bend, so you need a little drip, bigger hole. And Originally I reamed it out a little, but this carbon fiber splits incredibly easy, so don't do anything like that, okay? So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a .040 drill here, because then that gives the wire room to bend this way and that way, all right? So I'm gonna drill this hole now with a .040 drill. Okay, so I drilled the .020 hole, right? Uh, I'm sorry, it's .040 hole here on the end. And by the way, a number 60 drill gives you .040 hole. And then I didn't drill the other hole. What I like to do is I take it off and then I have a ruler with millimeters and actually half a millimeter markings because this part's important. So then I line it up on the hole and you got to remember which way you drilled the second hole. So I'm going to make the slot go that way. I made a little mark on there so I don't forget before I cut it out. And then I lined it up with the hole as accurately as I could and saw exactly where this is, okay? Because even if you mark it someplace, when you actually drill it, you might have moved it a little bit, even a half a millimeter, these things make a difference. 
So I got it there and then I was able to mark exactly where I want that hole right here. You probably can't see it, but there's just a little dot. Okay, and you got to remember I'm drilling all these holes with my magnifying glasses and the light on as well. All right, so now I'm going to drill that second .040 hole and it's just important that it's exactly the same distance and centered and if it isn't I'll probably start over and just do it again. All right, so I made the second hole and you know as long as it comes within about a millimeter, half a millimeter really. I'll accept it. If it's more than that, a millimeter or more, I'll just redo it yet again. And sometimes I've had to do it a few times to get it right. Okay? Now, then I cut it off, and I usually just put this in my drill. It's a little cutter here. Or if you have a fine zone, you could probably do that. And uh, I cut it off. Now, one recommendation here is don't cut it off too close. I cut it off and leave a little extra, maybe at least a sixteenth of an inch extra. Okay, and you also got to be very careful because uh, it splits really easy and then it's, you know, it ruins it. Same when you're drilling the holes, a very light pressure when you drill the holes. Otherwise, you'll also break the tiny drill bits. Okay, so now that I got it cut and then what I do is I just sand it. That's why I recommend don't cut it too close. You could just sand it. This is a 120 and you'll be amazed. It sands really quick. So I sanded it down. I also rounded the edges slightly here. Okay. Then I'm going to take a, uh, you know, a cutting blade here, a saw blade, and here's one assortment I just bought on Amazon. This one goes from point, uh, 4 slash 0 to number 2. Now, for penny plane, you can use bigger, 4 slash 0 or 3 slash 0. It depends how big you make the hole. For um, F1R, I had to get 8 slash 0. Those are very, very small because it's a very small hole. Okay, and I don't like to drill it out too much. Don't think you're just going to make it by drilling because if you're at an angle or something, it's going to mess it up. So then what I do is I get the number four drill, okay, and you got to remember which way you're filing it. All right, so I'm filing it this way, and then I just do it by hand. I, I have a holder and stuff, but I just do it like this, and I very slowly uh, saw it, you know, and check it. You got to make sure you, you keep straight and this part you don't want to rush, all right? And then you're going to do it so it's just big enough to hold this, okay? So I'll have to take it out and check. It takes a little time, but you got to take your time on this and do it right. So let me do that. All right, so I cut the slit. And, you know, it wanders a little sometimes. It's tricky while you're doing it. And the main thing to make sure is that you end up in the middle, right at the end of where the driver goes, if you can see it in there. So the next thing I do is I kind of tack glue it on. Okay, so I use this Loctite, some super glue. All right, they also have an impact resistant one. Get that because that's a little bit rubberized. It's even better. And then what I do is I just get a little dot or two of that on a toothpick. Okay, and then I just put it on the top a little bit like where I see you see the wire. I'll put a little bit on there and just a tot on the other side. Now you have about 20 seconds till that sets up. So you got to check it in two directions. Now, first what I do is you got to check it this way. And you see I have, uh, this is where this comes in handy. Otherwise, just keep markings out so you could do this to make sure it's nice and square that way. And then also I hold it with some flat nose pliers because I want to make sure it's also square in this direction. Okay. So then when that's done, when that looks good, you only got about 20 seconds till it sets up. Uh, then I would just let it leave it for a couple of minutes, all right, until it really firms up. And then I, again, get some more glue, and I, then I'll put it a little bit on the bottom. And here, don't clump it on, just a little bit to make sure it's all filled around the wire. And then let it sit for a good hour. You really want to make sure it's nice and dry. All right, so this one came out really nice. I think it's pretty straight. So the last thing to do is wrap it with Kevlar thread. I'll show you that. And then we're ready to get on to the next part. All right, so here it is, ready to go. It's ready now. We just gotta wrap it with the thread, and then I soak it with a little thin CA. I'll show you that. Now, you should make sure everything is nice and square here. This is your last chance to make any adjustments, really. What I do is I put it in the shaft and spin it around, make sure it looks like it tracks true and things like that. Now, one thing you gotta be careful is if you wanna make any adjustments, don't bend the wire against the uh, carbon fiber there because you'll just break that joint that you made there if you have to make any adjustments to the wire What I do is I hold the wire with the pliers and then you can make your little tweaks. Okay, 
really shouldn't have to do that that much but sometimes I see a little something and I want to straighten it out all right so then I get the Kevlar thread and here we go you can get this I just got this online at Amazon this is just uh, natural okay and I usually take a piece maybe you know a few inches long five or six inches long you don't need that much now I don't want to use the whole thread because it's too much so I just take out some threads for F1R where you want very light I take out very through few threads but for here you know it's penny plain and I just like to get enough there that looks like enough and so I'll pull those out okay I'll save the rest of it because I can use that later and uh, whoops and here it is and you can twist it a little bit to make sure it's together there you go I'm just smoothing the end out a little bit okay twist the threads so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little dot of glue and I'm gonna fix it on the side opposite where the metal bar comes in which is on that side I'm just gonna glue it here like this and either just hold it for a few seconds or you could you know you could tape it or wait it but here I'm just gonna it's pretty simple I'm just gonna do that and then glue it for a few seconds okay and then I'll come right back okay so what I did is I held it up with a little magnets like this I put a little dot of glue there and then I just held this there and it really sets in you know five ten seconds <clears throat> so I then I trimmed it off okay and now I'm gonna take it out of there now what I like to do is I like to hang a little clothespin on the end just to keep tension on it okay and uh, so then what I do is I wrap it around I so here this is on the side without the metal I give it a few wraps there you know try to keep it fairly even then I cross over a little bit so see here now I'm gonna go over to the other side just to strengthen that joint and then over here and then back again and then I'm gonna just wrap it around now we're on the side where the metal is in case you can't see it and that you want to make sure you bind right so I'm gonna wrap that around a few times and uh, make sure I get the end okay we're almost there and then what I'm gonna do so that looks good there you go so I'm gonna glue it on the bottom so now what I just do is I take another little dot of the CA okay and I need two hands to, well my, my, I don't know if I could do this on film but I'm just gonna put a little dot of CA there and then I'm gonna let that dry here let me try to just get a little bit you can see this one's pretty beat I, I've used that glue a lot it's almost empty and then there you go and that's just so that um, you know it just to kind of seal it down because then what I'm gonna do is this is one of the few times I'm gonna use thin CA okay so I'm gonna let that dry again you know wait a few minutes and then I'll show you the next all right so this is one of the few times I'm gonna use the thin CA okay don't use it on tubing it penetrates too much but for this it's good to soak the thread a little bit so what I do is make sure you get over a paper towel because you want to dot it off also have a toothpick handy because you don't really want it to go in the holes and if it does you can clean it out with a toothpick okay so I'm gonna face it down here so it doesn't run down the shaft and I'm just gonna put a drop there like that and you can see it goes right through you see it hanging there I'm just gonna get rid of that there you go and now we'll take a look at it that was a nice one you want to make sure it's all pretty shiny uh, in the sense that uh, you know it's all pretty wet you can see the thread there looks all pretty wet and there too that was a good one if you want to be overly ambitious I'll try one more just to double check and there we go and I'm pretty sure that's that's everything you want now I'm gonna get rid of it again the extra and you see I didn't fill in the holes or anything like that okay so now I'm gonna let this dry and that really to really set up takes like a good hour so let it sit for a good hour and then we're gonna get on to the next part which is uh, cutting the tubing and here I'm just gonna use the magnets to hold that and let that dry for a while all right now I do have the tubing and we're getting ready to go so first I put it in here and we're gonna need that in order to mark this so I'm gonna wait until that dries okay a few last things and then we're finally done with the driver you can see this took the longest here okay so I made the uh, hook here all right and I like to leave a little longer there because I'm using these big o-rings this way they won't come off 
The other thing I do and you should do is get a razor blade and then just scrape along the shaft here because if you got any glue on that, you want to get it off. Okay, and particularly on the bottom side, I was pretty good this time, not much really happened. There's a little piece there. Okay, and that way the washers will sit nice and flat on that. So you have to clean that off as well. All right. And then once you're done with that, you're pretty much ready to go. So now I'm going to finally get to the tube. All right, so now we're ready to do the tubing. And like I do before, I like to tape it to a board. Okay. Now, since the driver was 22 millimeters and on each side I had the hole come in about 2 millimeters, um, you know, it's 18 millimeters. But what I'd rather just do is actually take it, okay, and you want the end to be where the hole is now. I don't have it right at the hole. Have it a little extra because it's easy to sand down. So what I did is I marked where the middle is, and then I also marked where the end is. So the first thing I'm going to do is drill the hole. Now there is one thing that's, this is a little tricky. You have to get it right on top. Here's the thing, if you just pull down on the drill, it's gonna just slide right off. You'll see it, you'll see the drill bit sliding on the side. So what I do is like come down to where I'm barely touching it and then I just lower it as little as I can. Eventually, if you kind of hold it, it'll make a little divot. And once you got that divot, now you can kind of get the drill through. And then on the bottom, of course, it's easier. And then you gotta check it. All right, so I'm going to make the drill now. Okay, so we got the hole drilled, all right, and it was a little tight, so I, I used a little 0 .50, uh, 0 .55 millimeter drill, and now it's on there. Then I cut it, and as usual, I cut it over length, and then I file it a little bit. You'll probably see there's some graphite on my fingers here because I was just filing it. it. makes a little black dust. Then I need another little 5 millimeter piece, which is right there. Then what I do is I move this all the way up to the end so it's sticking off so I can put just the, I, I tack glue it again and I'm going to do it with the uh, Loctite just like I did before. All right, let me see if I can do it on camera. Otherwise, I'll just do it in another segment. So I'm going to get a little, just a little dot of glue and uh, I want that on there. So let me slip that back on. I'm going to move it up so it's off the wire and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue like that. And now you got about 20 seconds before it's going to set. So then I'm going to slip it back down on the wire. You don't want to glue it to the wire. You got to be careful with that. So I'm going to move it and get it down. Okay. Clean off the end a little bit. There. Just to make sure. Now I'm going to slip on my tubing. There we go. And now I'm just going to push it up against that, try to get it as square as I can. I'm moving it again to make sure it doesn't glue. And you know, I usually will use this as well to get it pretty close. And you just got to hold it a little bit. Okay, let me move this down. Got to hold it. And it'll start to set a little. And then what it does, uh, it's, it's like before, I'm just tack gluing it. Once it starts to firm up a little bit, I'm going to check it against this and do everything I can to get it as square as possible, okay? I'm going to stop the camera here because I only got about 20 seconds and I want to make sure I get this square. So I let that dry, okay, and uh, now I wrapped it with the thread. And it's the same as before. I start with the bottom and I glue a little, tack, you know, glue a little piece there, let it dry, then I wrap the bottom and I actually put a little glue on that let it dry and then I pull it up and wrap it this way on the top because what you wanted to do was to pull the bottom up against the top so I wrap it this way then I cross over wrap it a few times that way and then I crisscross it not too much you can see here okay and that's pretty much ready to go now in the old days I thought well I could get away if I use a little bit of thin CA very lightly here and here no don't do that sometimes I got away with it but it's incredibly porous. It usually gets in and clogs this tube. If it seals it, that's it. You got to make a new one. Or even if you're very careful, it'll still clog it. So I would recommend never use thin CA on this. I'm going to use the gel again because this penetrates enough and even this will go in if you do too much. And I'm just going to rub a little bit all around the thread. Okay. And then I'll just let it harden up and then that's done and we're ready to go on to the next part. 
I hope we're not hitting here. Let's see. Yeah, okay. No, we're okay yeah. now. You're down a little Very bit. Cool did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a close one there for a second. I, I'm still going up. OK, 